Step into the groovy world of a 1965 film that's more than just a blast from the past. Full of funny, shocking, and even sad moments, this flick promises a roller coaster ride of emotions. Wondering what makes it stand the test of time? What enduring qualities turn it into a timeless symbol of the industry? Or maybe there's a particular scene etched in your memory, leaving a lasting impact? Keep watching, we've got facts that'll surprise you. Now, here's the kicker, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem? We're all ears and would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. The floor is yours, so share away. Stay tuned for more insights and anecdotes about this classic. There's more to discover and we're just getting started. Get ready for a trip down memory lane and a few surprises along the way. The film, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine, released in 1965, has gained notoriety for its unique blend of campy humor and unconventional storytelling. Starring Vincent Price as the titular Dr. Goldfoot and Frankie Avalon as the main protagonist, the movie unfolds with a Mottown Clamation intra-themed song, introducing viewers to a world of hilariously bad yet strangely entertaining moments. The plot revolves around Dr. Goldfoot's creation Dane, a multi-accented robot with a penchant for impersonating Carmen Sandiego's wardrobe. The narrative takes unexpected turns with elements like dungeons filled with motorcycle riders, a dense henchman, a Scooby-Doo-esque graveyard, and a notably improbable chase scene. Amidst the chaos, the film features a wacky theme song that adds to its offbeat charm. Despite its shortcomings, such as a goofy plot and questionable slapstick humor, the movie manages to captivate audiences with its unintentional comedy. Viewers who appreciate mocking poorly made films might find joy in hurling witty insults at the screen, making it a potential choice for bad movie nights. While the film may not appeal to everyone, it leaves an indelible mark on those who enjoy the unexpected laughter that ensues. In conclusion, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine is a product of its time, blending elements of comedy and campiness that may not resonate with all audiences. However, for those seeking a lighthearted and comically flawed cinematic experience, this film offers a unique and entertaining journey into the realm of unconventional storytelling. Following its release in 1965, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine achieved moderate success at the U.S. box office, yet it struck a chord with audiences in Italy, where it became a major hit. The sequel, titled Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, was filmed in Italy under the direction of Mario Bava, featuring the Italian comedy duo Franco Franchi and Sixio Ingrassia. A notable scene in the movie unfolds at the outset and during the concluding chase through the streets of San Francisco, where a car navigates the twists and turns of Lombard Street. Renowned for its eight sharp bends, Lombard Street holds the title of the world's most crooked street, too narrow for tour buses to navigate. It's worth noting that Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine hit the screens approximately a year after the U.S. release of Goldfinger, the film cleverly parodies certain aspects of the Bond franchise, particularly its title. In summary, this 1965 film found its place in the hearts of Italian audiences, achieving greater success overseas than in its home country. The sequel continued the saga with an Italian touch, showcasing the picturesque Lombard Street in San Francisco. Its clever nod to the Bond series adds an intriguing layer to its narrative. In a quirky vehicular pursuit midway through the narrative, characters speed past a movie marquee featuring the girl in the glass bikini. This supposed sequel, touted in end credits, promised Annette Funicello, Deborah Wally, Harvey Lembeck, and Aaron Kincaid, yet the eventual production, titled Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, featured none of these actors and the storyline diverged. Vincent Price, the star of the film, shared in a 1987 interview with David Del Val that the movie, despite its potential for enjoyment, fell short due to the omission of all its music. A noteworthy sequence in the dungeon, featuring long shots of Vincent Price, actually repurposed footage from the pit and the pendulum. The torture chamber's art and set direction, helmed by Daniel Haller, echoed his previous work on Edgar Allan Poe adaptations for Roger Corman, where Vincent Price also played a significant role. In summary, the film's sequel took an unexpected turn, lacking the promised cast, and Vincent Price expressed disappointment over the omission of music. The reuse of footage from a prior film added a layer of familiarity to the dungeon scene, 
connecting it to the broader context of Haller's artistic contributions to Poe adaptations. This sheds light on the behind-the-scenes intricacies of the 1965 film. In 1965, the film industry witnessed the debut of the first Dr. Goldfoot movie, setting the stage for a peculiar cinematic journey. Preceding this, a made-for-TV special, The Wild Weird World of Dr. Goldfoot, served as a promotional precursor, showcasing musical sequences trimmed from the film. Following the inaugural success, a sequel, Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, emerged a year later, marking the studio's attempt to extend the charm of the Beach Party series into new territory. Notably, the cast featured familiar faces from American International's Beach Party films, seamlessly transitioning the studio's stars into a different genre. This cinematic venture wasn't just any ordinary production. It was American International's most expensive project at the time, with a hefty budget exceeding one million. The film, though achieving only moderate success at the U.S. box office, found a devoted audience across the Atlantic in Italy. Its sequel, filmed in Italy under the direction of Mario Bava, introduced a touch of Italian flair, particularly evident in a gripping chase through the winding streets of San Francisco. An interesting twist in the narrative comes in the form of a peculiar movie marquee featuring the girl in the glass bikini. This apparent sequel promised a cast including Annette Funicello, Deborah Wally, Harvey Lembeck, and Aaron Kincaid. However, the eventual production, titled Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, deviated from expectations, featuring none of the promised actors and an altered storyline. Vincent Price, the star of the film, expressed disappointment in a 1987 interview, citing the omission of all the music as a detriment to the movie's potential enjoyment. Additionally, a dungeon sequence revealed reused footage from the pit and the pendulum, showcasing the intricate connection between the film's elements and Daniel Haller's past contributions to Poe adaptations. In conclusion, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine stands as a testament to a unique era in cinema, blending humor and campiness. Its unexpected journey from the shores of the U.S. to the streets of Italy adds an intriguing layer to its legacy, making it a distinctive chapter in the annals of film history. Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine, along with its sequel, Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, left an indelible mark on the film industry, serving as a significant influence on the later Austin Powers films. Starring Frankie Avalon as Craig Gamble and Dwayne Hickman as Todd Armstrong, the movie Ski Party saw a reversal of their roles from the aforementioned films. Due to a lawsuit by a London doctor named Goldfoot, the UK title of the movie became Dr. G and the Bikini Machine. This legal twist added an intriguing layer to the film's journey. In Italy, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine found unexpected success, while its sequel continued the saga with an Italian touch. The film showcased Lombard Street in San Francisco, known for its twists and turns in a notable chase scene. The clever parody of certain Bond franchise aspects, especially its title, added an interesting dynamic to the narrative. A peculiar aspect of the sequel was a supposed movie marquee featuring the girl in the glass bikini, promising a cast that didn't materialize. Vincent Price, the film's star, expressed disappointment in a 1987 interview, citing the absence of all the music as a detriment to the movie's potential enjoyment. Additionally, a dungeon sequence featured reused footage from the pit and the pendulum, connecting the film to Daniel Haller's past contributions to Poe adaptations. The Dr. Goldfoot cinematic journey began with a made-for-TV special, The Wild Weird World of Dr. Goldfoot, showcasing musical sequences trimmed from the film. As American International's most expensive project at the time, with a budget exceeding $1 million, the film found moderate success in the U.S., but garnered a devoted audience in Italy. In conclusion, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine and its sequel, Dr. Goldfoot and the Girl Bombs, form a unique chapter in cinema history. Their unexpected journey from the U.S. to Italy, the legal battle over the title, and the sequel's deviations from expectations make this cinematic duo a distinctive part of film lore.